Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about one of the most requested video and that is the overview of transcription in prokaryotes. So first of all, what is a transcription? Now we know that the DNA that we have has all the genes that codes for specific protein, right? So the DNA will produce RNA which codes for protein and ultimately this RNA would produce the protein. That means the DNA transcribed into RNA, the process of RNA synthesis from DNA is what we call transcription and then RNA gets translated into protein. This some other time we will talk about but today we are going to concentrate on this particular aspect. DNA transcribed into RNA that means RNA synthesis from DNA is transcription. So which means the DNA provides the information for synthesis of RNA strand as simple as that you know the DNA would have all the sequences that would make the RNA specific genes or codes that would be in the RNA that were transcribed in the form of RNA and then later on it gets translated to produce the protein. And just like we had seen in case of DNA replication, there was DNA polymerase enzyme polymerizing the new strand of DNA. So here also we need an enzyme. Since we are talking about RNA synthesis, the enzyme, simple enough to understand, is called RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase can add the nucleotides which is complementary to the DNA template strand. Now, now what is this template strand? So DNA is double stranded right we know that much and when it comes to RNA production it is not that both the strands of DNA gets transcribed right it is only one strand because RNA is a single stranded molecule so only one strand of DNA gets transcribed into RNA and that one strand which gets transcribed or that has all the information to produce RNA is called the template strand and this also is called as uh, non-coding strand. Now we have talked about this, this you know is confusing sometimes what is coding strand, what is non-coding strand, antisense strand. So we have talked about all this difference between all these in detail and I have shown you a trick there how you can remember it. But here as of now you understand this much that it is the template strand. The strand of DNA that gets transcribed is called the template strand. And this is, you know, the synthesis occurs uh, in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The RNA polymerase, you know, just as the DNA polymerase do, the RNA polymerase also synthesize the RNA in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. That, that means the RNA polymerase adds the nucleotide in the 3' prime end of the newly synthesized RNA or the growing chain of RNA. So which means the template is simple enough to understand in what direction the template is 3 prime to 5 prime direction right that, that that's how only you can synthesize the 5 prime to 3 prime RNA. So the template strand is 3 prime to 5 prime DNA strand and the RNA is complementary to that that means it is 5 prime to 3 prime so at 3 prime end of the growing RNA is where the nucleotides are added by RNA polymerase now this is very basic points of transcription very basic point that you have RNA polymerase that adds the nucleotide to the growing strand of RNA at 3 prime end producing RNA and the template strand is 3 prime to 5 prime direction now where exactly will this RNA polymerase go and start synthesizing the RNA? Randomly anywhere? No, right? Like in uh, DNA synthesis replication also we saw there is specific point where the polymerase goes and start the process. Similarly in transcription also it is not random. The RNA polymerase not randomly goes and bind anywhere. There is a specific point where it will start or initiate the transcription and that is based on the promoters that are present in the DNA. 
Now, in case of uh, prokaryotes in E. coli, uh, this has been studied that the promoter sites, there are two promoter sites in the bacteria where the polymerase can bind and initiate the process. Now, if you look at this particular stretch of DNA, this double strand of DNA, this is the 3 prime to 5 prime strand. That means this is my template strand. And there is a specific start point where the initiation of the transcription will start, right? That start point is labeled as plus one site. That means this is the first uh, place, this is the first nucleotide where the transcription will start. So this is plus one. Now anything before left hand side of the plus one would be minus and anything that is, you know, towards the right, the right side will be plus. It's just as simple as that. Uh, you know, you go towards the left, the number will be given minus, and if you go towards the right, it will be plus 2, plus 3, and so on. So, in the left hand side, which is also called the upstream, and the right hand side is called the downstream. So, on the upstream is where the promoters in bacteria lies, and it is found in the minus 10 and minus 35 position. There are these uh, specific sequences that are present in the bacteria that act as promoter. Okay, They are located in minus 10 and minus 35 location. They are called minus 10 element and minus 35 element. Specific sequences. These are specific sequences where the RNA polymerase comes and binds. These are the uh, sequences that gets recognized by the RNA polymerase. Okay, these are the uh, landmark. This is how RNA polymerase knows where I have to bind. Now, the uh, the promoter exactly the sequences, the minus 35 sequences, T T G A C G, and the minus 10 is T A T A A T. These two sequences are actually located at five prime strand, five prime to three prime strand. So, it is the non-template strand. Okay, this is one point that students get confused. The promoters are located on the non-template strand. Okay, and the complementary uh, uh, to that promoter is on the template strand. Okay, so the promoter, the sequences that are found, T, T, G, A, C, G, T, A, T, A, A, T, are the promoters uh, are the promoter sequences that are located on the non-template strand or that is the 5 prime to 3 prime strand. So this is what is the promoters in case of bacteria. The important thing to remember my, uh, promoter sites minus 10 element minus 35 element TA, TA, AT is also called Pribno box. Promoters are present on the non-template strand. So what about the RNA polymerase? Now let's know a little bit about uh, the RNA polymerase in bacteria. Now in E. coli it is uh, studied and it is seen that uh, the RNA polymerase in bacteria is actually made up of four subunits and that is alpha, beta, beta prime and sigma factor. So this is all the subunits of the RNA polymerase and in fact alpha will be there will be two subunits of alpha so alpha beta beta prime and sigma but there are two subunits of alpha but what is found is that the sigma subunit can actually dissociate from the uh, other subunits it is weakly bound and it can actually dissociate from alpha beta and beta prime subunits so this complex where you have alpha, beta and beta prime, this is seen that these subunits together can actually polymerize the RNA, but it cannot recognize the promoter. So when you have these uh, three subunits and there are, if I want to say, two subunits of alpha, so there are four, but actually three types of subunit, when there is alpha, beta and beta prime together, it can synthesize the RNA polymerase. So that's in this complex is called the core enzyme, but this core enzyme cannot recognize the promoter and cannot bind at the promoter side. For that, the sigma subunit is important. Okay, so sigma subunit can recognize and bind at the promoter side. So when this whole complex is there, all of these subunits together, alpha, beta, beta prime, and sigma, is what we call holoenzyme, and this can recognize and bind at the promoter side. So without sigma, this RNA polymerase core enzyme cannot bind to the promoter side. It 
So at the promoter site, there will be the holoenzyme. That means RNA polymerase along with sigma factor will bind at the promoter site and it will start the transcription. Once the transcription start, as I said, it is weakly bound. It can be dissociate uh, from the rest of the enzyme. So it will actually release after the initiation. The sigma factor gets released from the uh, RNA polymerase once the initiation occurs. So that's the role of sigma factor, recognition and binding at the promoter site. And rest of the core enzyme can polymerize the RNA. So that uh, leads us to the three steps of the process, initiation, elongation, termination, you know, three steps as we had seen also in the DNA replication. So initiation means simple enough to understand to initiate the transcription. So what happens is, as I said, the recognition site or the start point of transcription is the promoter region. So the initiation of transcription occurs at the promoter region at DNA. That is where the RNA polymerase binds. So if we look at this particular diagram over here, as I said, promoter sequences are in the non-template strand. That promoter sequences, minus 10, minus 35, are going to recognize by the RNA polymerase. But which, uh, which particular subunit specifically is the sigma factor. Okay, that can recognize. So RNA polymerase now can bind at this promoter site. Now at this particular point where the DNA is not yet uh, unwound, the DNA is still in double stranded form and RNA polymerase is bound at this promoter site, this complex is called the closed promoter complex. Okay, and once it binds, the uh, minus 10 element site the promoter at minus 10 can actually unwound, can separate. And that is easier because you see here only A and T nucleotides are there. So only two hydrogen bonds are there. That is easy to separate compared to G and C in the minus 35 element. So this, uh, the unwinding or the separation of two strand occurs at the minus 10 element. And at this particular point, this complex where the separation has occurred is called the open promoter complex. Close simply because the DNA is not yet unwound and here it is open because two strands are separated. So this is where the, uh, the, the transcription bubble is formed and it will start transcribing. So after the separation, initiation of transcription occurs and the uh, sigma factor can now release because because recognition, binding and open complex is formed, so sigma factor can now be released. So this initiates the transcription. Then comes the elongation. So what happens in elongation? Elongation of the RNA is simple enough to understand. So now this RNA polymerase will read this template strand. What is the template strand? 3 prime to 5 prime strand. So as it will read this strand, it will start synthesizing the RNA in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So it will add the new nucleotides at the 3 prime end of the growing RNA chain. So RNA synthesize in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So that's how elongation will take place. Now, once uh, the RNA strand is synthesized, once the gene that has to be transcribed is done, how, what should happen? It should terminate, right? It, it cannot simply go on. There has to be termination once the gene is transcribed. So the last phase of transcription is termination. Now the termination in bacteria occurs in two ways and that is based on uh, one of the factor called rho factor. Either the rho factor is involved or it is not involved. So the first type is called the rho dependent and the other one is called the rho independent. So rho dependent as the name itself says it involves, it depends on the rho factor. Okay, It's a protein which is called the rho factor. So what happens is in the DNA there will be a specific site which actually codes for this rho protein. So when the transcription is uh, occurring it will also transcribe this particular gene that codes for the rho protein. So the newly synthesized RNA would have a binding site for the rho protein because it is transcribed now. So the RNA would have a, a binding site for a protein that is rho factor where the rho protein can come and bind. 
So now the rho protein can come and bind to this newly synthesized RNA and it will start uh, moving towards the RNA polymerase. It, it will travel towards the RNA polymerase and once it reaches RNA polymerase it has the ability to separate the RNA transcript from the template strand. So it will pull apart the RNA transcript from the DNA template DNA. It will separate these two strands and because of that once the strand is separate the RNA molecule can be released and that will end the transcription. Now at the end you know there is a transcription stop point in the uh, DNA. Now this transcription stop point causes pause of RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase will pause at that particular site so that the rho factor can catch up at uh, that particular uh, transcription bubble and it will remove, it will separate the transcript from the template DNA. So that is how the rho dependent termination occurs. The second way uh, is rho independent that means there is no rho factor involved. So in this case what happens is in the DNA instead of this uh, rho binding site in the DNA there will be GC rich inverted repeat sequence. Now what happens is when you have a GC rich inverted repeat sequence in the DNA the RNA that is transcribed also will have this GC rich sequence the inverted repeats and what happens when you have this inverted repeats it can actually complement they, they are complementary they are inverted repeats so they can make base pair with each other it will fold itself back and form the hairpin structure so instead of having this row factor this mechanism is based on specific sequence in the DNA template that is GC rich inverted repeats it, this region will fold back on itself because there are you know complementary uh, G and C sequences resulting into hairpin structure this kind of a loop will be formed and this uh, GC rich inverted repeats is actually followed by poly A residue in the DNA so that means the transcript RNA would have poly U tail followed by this hairpin loop. So the hairpin loop will actually cause uh, the RNA polymerase to pause and because it is followed by poly A and U binding which is a weak binding compared to G and C it will be easy for the transcript to be removed from the template DNA. That's how the termination in case of rho independent uh, mechanism take place. So that is how the termination of transcription occurs. So this is all about the transcription of uh, prokaryotes, transcription in prokaryotes, just the overview. I hope this video was helpful. Do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and I will see you next time. Until then keep learning.